Hi everyone. This video we are going to see about the part two of respiratory assessment. In the previous video, in part one, we have seen the history collection in relation to the relation to the respiratory system. And in this video, we are going to see the second part that is physical examination. And in physical examination, in this video, we are going to see about the inspection and palpation method of respiratory assessment. I am Chulnge Thomas, faculty working in Triplum College of Nursing. The objective of this video, the group should be able to demonstrate the inspection and palpation method of chest examination. Respiratory assessment or respiratory examination, otherwise it is known as lung examination, is performed as a part of physical examination in response to respiratory symptoms such as shortness of breath, cough or chest pain. If the patient manifests with any symptoms such as shortness of breath, cough or chest pain, a respiratory examination or a lung examination will be carried out. The main elements of a respiratory assessment includes thorough history collection, physical examination and other investigation. History collection already dealt in the previous video and in this video we are going to see about the four steps of respiratory examination that is inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation of respiratory sounds. So the physical examination of the respiratory system include inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. What is physical examination? Physical examination is the process of evaluating objective anatomic findings through the use of observation, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Inspection is the use of vision to distinguish the normal from the abnormal findings. The body parts are inspected to identify the color, shape, symmetry, movement or pulsation and texture. In this method of, in, in this method of physical examination, inspection, the sense of vision will be used. By observing or by inspecting a patient body, we are going to identify the abnormalities which is present in the patient body. So inspection, it is the use of vision to distinguish any abnormalities present in the chest in relation to the respiratory system. Palpation, it involves the use of hands to touch any body parts to identify any data which is relevant to the respiratory system. So it uses the fingertips and palm to determine the size, the shape and the configuration of the underlying body structure and pulsations of the blood vessels. The tip of the finger or the finger parts can be used to identify any abnormalities or any temperature changes, the moisture, the target, the texture, the size, the shape of the different organs can be identified with the help of palpation. So before doing a physical examination in relation to respiratory system, what are the preparations needed? First, we need positioning of the patient. Before doing physical examination, we need to position the patient. Position should be done appropriately for identifying the abnormalities correctly. So the patient should sit upright on the examination table. The patient hand should remain at their sides. When the posterior part of the chest is examined, the patient has to have a forward lean so that the scapula are not in the way of examining the upper lung feeds. When we are doing a posterior chest examination, the patient has to lean forward and hug a pillow so that the posterior chest will be widened and we can easily identify any abnormalities present in the posterior chest. Next is draping. So whenever we are doing a respiratory assessment, it is very essential to cover the body parts, only expose minimal area where we want to do an examination. So area to be assessed is exposed and other areas to be covered. The chest should be fully exposed. Exposure time should be minimized. We should not expose the chest for a long time. So which part posterior chest want to be examined, the anterior part of the chest should be covered. So the exposure time should be minimized when we are doing an examination. Environment. When we are doing an examination, the time should be convenient for the patient as well as the nurse. When the patient is taking rest, avoid doing the examination. The area should be well lighted. Equipment should be organized. Provide privacy for the patient. Room should be warm enough to be comfortable for the patient. 
Next, we need to prepare the instrument which is necessary for doing an examination. All the equipments which is needed for the examination should be thoroughly cleaned. It should be in a good, good working condition and it should be readily accessible when we need to do an examination. Next is psychological preparation. How to psychologically prepare the patient before doing an examination? Always ask the patient to remain calm during the procedure. Explain the procedure what we are going to do. When we are going to examine the chest, explain what we are going to do before we start doing the examination. Allow client or the patient to feel free to ask questions and mention if any discomfort the patient is having, the patient should be feel free to say the discomfort. Coming to the respiratory assessment, the equipment needed for doing a physical examination or respiratory assessment. The equipment which is necessary for doing a respiratory assessment are a stethoscope, inch tape, marker pen, and a peak flow meter. A stethoscope is used to assess the abnormal breath sounds or auscultatory sounds. An inch tape is usually used to measure the chest circumference or the anterior posterior diameter to identify any abnormal shape of the chest. And a marker pen is used to locate the important landmarks of the chest while doing an examination. And a peak flow meter is used to assess the physiological function of the lungs or how the lung functions can be identified with the help of a peak flow meter. The four components of a respiratory assessment. The four important components of a respiratory assessment includes inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. In this video, we are going to concentrate only the inspection and palpation method. In the coming videos, I'll be explaining about the percussion and auscultation method. As we have seen the inspection, in this inspection, we are using the sense of vision or we are going to observe any abnormalities or we are going to inspect the chest of the patient and going to identify any abnormalities. And in palpation, we are using the finger pads to touch and see any changes in the chest wall. The first part of physical examination, that is inspection. With the sense of vision, we are going to inspect or observe any abnormalities which is present on the chest. So while we are doing an inspection, it is mandatory that we have to inspect the anterior chest, that is the front part of the chest, the posterior chest, that is the back part of the chest, and lateral chest, that is the side part of the chest. So whenever we are starting with a respiratory assessment, it is better to go from the posterior side. First, we have to do a thorough physical examination of the posterior part of the chest. So the all four physical examination method, that is the inspection, the palpation, percussion, and auscultations can be completed in the posterior surface and make the, com make the patient comfortable in the supine position. And then we can start doing the anterior part of the chest and then lateral part of the chest. So when we are examining or doing the inspection, inspect the anterior, posterior, and lateral thorax for the following main components. So in inspection, first we need to assess the color of the chest. Posterior, lateral, as well as the anterior chest, we need to see the color of the skin. The normal findings, the color will be pink. But any abnormalities in case of decreased oxygenation to the tissues, the patient will have pallor, cyanosis, tar stain, or bruising can be seen. Next, coming to the shape of the chest, if we take a cross-section of the chest, the normal shape of the chest is elliptical in nature. For any deviation in the shape of the chest can be, the common deviations we can identify are the pectus carinatum, pectus excavatum, and the barrel chest. All these are related to the changes in the anterior posterior diameter of the chest. The third one in inspection comes the shape and position of the sternum. The sternum is the breastbone, which is located on the middle part of the chest. It will be connected to the ribs. So the sternum, how the shape and position of the sternum, normal findings is it will be in the level with the ribs. So the abnormalities we can identify in case of the shape and position of sternum is either it can be depressed or projecting. So that can be considered as an abnormal findings. Next is just symmetry. 
if we draw an imaginary line through the center of the chest how both sides of the chest look is it equal or it is unequal so normal normally it should be equal in nature if any unevenness present on the right and the left side or any unequal shape present on the left and the right chest that seems to be abnormal then we have to see for any scar mark or lesions on the chest usually there will not be any scar mark or lesions which is present in the chest but if the patient underwent any cabg surgery or if the patient is having any fungal or any bacterial infections on the chest lesions can be identified or after a cabg surgery scar mark can be seen on the center of the chest that can be considered as an abnormal findings so these are this picture depicts them of the abnormal shape of the chest like if you take a cross section of the chest barrel chest pectus excavatum and pectus carinatum and this in this picture we can see the abnormal or this unequal shape of both the sides of the chest the right and the chest, left chest if you see there will be unequal or the symmetry is not there the chest look asymmetric next comes the intercostal spaces intercostal spaces is the space between the ribs so the normal findings it will be even and relaxed but if the intercostal spaces or the spaces between the ribs is either bulged or retracted this can be considered as abnormal now coming to the chest expansion how the chest expand and relax normally in a chest expansion it should be 3 inches with deep inspiration it should expand and come back if it is abnormal less than 3 inches with deep inspiration decreases the chest exertion can be seen in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease patient because the lung is unable to expand due to the fibrosis of the lungs so the lung is not able to expand more than 3 inches so which indicates an abnormal condition and next we need to assess the anterior posterior to lateral diameter this can be assessed with the help of an inch tape the normal ratio between the anterior posterior and the transverse diameter is 1 is to 2 if it is more than 1 is to 2 ratio or less than 1 is to 2 ratio there will be some abnormal shape of the chest such as pectus carinatum or pectus excavatum or barrel chest so either any changes in this ratio that is anterior posterior to transverse diameter can leads to an abnormal shape of the chest in inspection the next comes the visible pulsation when we look at the anterior wall of the chest or the posterior wall of the chest can we see any visible pulsations over the chest wall in normal findings we cannot see any visible pulsations over the chest wall but in case of cardiac displacement due to any left pulmonary fibrosis or due to pneumothorax or massive pleural effusions we can see visible pulsations over the chest wall the pulsations we can see on the chest wall so that seems to be abnormal and then fine tremor fine tremor in the hands or in the fingers we need to see for any fine tremor usually no tremors can be seen in the fingers uh, if the patient is using beta beta to agonist for a long time for uh, respiratory problems example salbutamol if the patient is taking for a long time there is a chance for fine tremors for the patient and another one significant one is the asterixis that is flapping tremor ask the patient to hold the hand and we have to see for any tremors or flapping tremors in the fingers so when the patient has a carbon dioxide retention due to respiratory failure or in case of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease there is a chance for asterixis or flapping tremors can be seen in the hands so it is mainly related to the carbon dioxide retention so this is asterixis in this we have to ask the patient to hold the hand and we have to see for any tremors or flapping tremors in the fingers if this tremors present we indicate there is a carbon dioxide carbon dioxide retention and next we have to see for the clubbing of fingers clubbing of fingers is an important indications for cyanosis 
or decreased oxygenation to the tissues. When there is a decreased oxygenation to the tissues, hypertrophy of the tissues can take place. So clubbing of fingers means the normal angle of the nail bed is less than 160 degree. When the angle between the nail bed increases to more than 160 degree or more than 180 degree, which indicates clubbing of fingers. So usually when we keep the fingers together, we can identify the scram of the window. If the scram of the window is not visible, which indicates clubbing of fingers. So clubbing of, in normal findings, there will not be any clubbing of fingers. So the clubbing of fingers is associated with decreased oxygenation to the tissues in case of lung cancer or any interstitial lung disease or cystic fibrosis or bronchiectasis or in case of chronic COPD. So the patient will manifest with clubbing of fingers. So the angle between the nail bit will be increased more than 180 degree that indicates clubbing of fingers. And another one which we need to identify in the inspection is cachexia. So usually there will not be any cachexia identified. Cachexia is nothing but the abnormal muscle wasting. Sudden weight loss will be there. The patient will have anorexia. So that may be associated with some malignancy, lung cancer, in case the cachexia is evident. So we need to identify for any signs of cachexia. Normally, there will not be any cachexia. So cachexia is associated with malignancy. The symptoms of cachexia include Unintentional weight loss will be there, anorexia, loss of appetite will be there, skeletal muscle wasting will be there, and the patient will have a lowered quality of life. So we need to see for all these things when we are doing an inspection on the patient during respiratory assessment. Next, we need to see for the respiratory pattern, the rate, the rhythm, and the depth of the respiration. So the normal findings, the respiratory rate or the pattern will be even. Normal respiratory rate is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. And usually the patient will have a easy breathing, unlabored breathing. The patient don't need to take any difficulty while doing breathing. But deviation from the normal, the, there will be uneven, labored breathing will be present, difficulty in breathing, dyspnea. The respiratory rate will be either less than 12 breaths per minute or more than 20 breaths per minute. Uh, either it can be shallow or deep. So we need to see for the respiration, either it is tachypnea, increased respiratory rate, bradypnea or decreased respiratory rate. Is there any hyperventilation for the patient or any abnormalities in the respiration like a chine stroke respiration or hypoventilation or biotes respiration that we need to identify by seeing the respiratory pattern, the rate, rhythm and the depth. Next, we need to see for the rib slope, how the rib, less, the normal angle of the rib is 90 degree downwards. Any deviation from normal indicates there is a horizontal or more than 90 degree. The slope of the rib will be more than 90 degree. And next, we need to see for any use of accessory muscle for breathing. Normally, patient won't use any accessory muscle while respiration. But if the patient is having any difficulty in breathing, the use of respiratory muscle is common. Either sternocleidal muscle or diaphragm will be used while during the respiration. So these are the common findings we need to identify when we are going for an inspection of the anterior, posterior and the lateral chest. Next, moving to the second part of palpation. The second part of the physical examination, that is palpation. Palpation is the process of physical examination in which the finger parts will be used to assess the assess any abnormalities of the chest wall. In, in case of any shape, any changes in size, any mass present, what is the texture, what is the target of the skin can be identified with the help of the finger parts. So while doing palpation, what preparation we need to do is that we need to drape the anterior chest. We have to expose only the limited parts. First, always starts with the posterior thorax. Okay, first, first all the physical examination method should be completed in the posterior part, and then we need to come to the anterior part and lateral part. Use finger pad and palm to palpate the posterior chest. Have a patient fold arm across the anterior chest and lean forward to increase the area of the lungs when we are assessing the posterior part of the chest. So in palpation with the finger parts, 
So always go in an order while we are doing the palpation method. So we have to start from the right side of the chest that is below the clavicle. That point will be marked as one, then two, three, four. So in a zigzag manner, we have to palpate and see for the anterior chest as well as the lateral chest and the posterior chest. So always start from below the clavicle on the right side, then to the left side, then the left side nipple, then to the right side nipple. So always go in a zigzag manner while doing the palpation in the chest. So palpate and see for the following findings. First one is sensation. Sensation, while we are pressing and seeing the chest wall, that usually there will not be any pain or tenderness over the chest. In case of any abnormalities, the patient will experience pain. The patient will experience tenderness. In case of any inflamed con connective tissues or any inflamed pleural pleura, there will be pain or tenderness over the chest wall. Or in case of any lung infection, there will be pain or tenderness over the chest wall. So we need to palpate and see for any pain or tenderness over the chest wall. Second one is edema. So edema, we need to assess in the medial malleolus or throughout the body, any edema presence. Usually there will not be any edema present. So edema is usually associated with right ventricular failure. So whenever the, we are identifying an edema, we need to grade it. Grade the edema for plus one, plus two, plus three, and plus four. So when we press the edema, we have to measure the indentation. If the indentation is two millimeter, it is one plus. If it is four millimeter, it is two plus. If it is six millimeter, it is three plus, and it is eight millimeter, it is four plus. So we need to grade the edema whenever we identify an edema. So always the edema is associated with right ventricular failure. Next, we need to look for the apical pulse. So the apical pulse, the location or the landmark for the apical pulse is the left to fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. So we need to palpate and feel for the pulse which is present on the left fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line where we can assess the apical pulse. So in case of cardiomyopathy or irregular beats, we cannot feel the a pulse or irregular pulse can be felt in the fifth intercostal space in the left mid clavicular line. Next is crepitus. Crepitus is a crackling sound we can feel in case if the patient is having any subcutaneous air associated with pneumothorax. If air is filled in the lungs, so abnormal air fill in the pleura, so there will be pneumothorax. So we can feel the crackles over the chest wall. So usually it will not be felt on the chest wall. In case of any subcutaneous air associated with pneumothorax, we can feel this crackles. Next is vocal fromitus or tactile fromitus. For assessing the tactile fromitus, we have to place the palm over the chest anteriorly as well as posterior chest. We need to keep the palm in this, like in this picture. And we need to ask the patient to repeat certain words which will create a vibration in the chest wall, like 99, blue moon. Okay, when the patient says the word or the number, we need to feel for the vibrations which is produced by the chest wall. So the vibration, usually in normal findings, the vibration will be decreased over the periphery of the lungs and increased over the major airways in the central region. So in case of different abnormalities such as consolidation of obstruction of the airway or pleural effusion or pneumothorax, there will be variations in this vibration. So in case of consolidation, the vibration will be increased. In case of airway obstruction, the vibration will be decreased. In case of pleural effusion and pneumothorax, the vibration will be decreased. So based on the production of the vibration by the chest wall, we can identify any abnormalities is there in the airway. So that is vocal promitus. Ask the patient when the patient is lying down or when the patient is sitting, keep the palm over the chest wall and ask the patient to repeat the word 99 or blue moon. So this 99 or blue moon will create a vibration over the chest wall and we can identify the vibration, how far the vibration or what is the intensity of the vibration. If the vibration in normal case, the vibration is decreased over the periphery and increased over the major airways. So this is the method how we need to check the tactile or vocal from it is we have to keep our hands over the posterior chest, ask the patient to repeat the word and check for the vibrations. 
Next is position of trachea. So how the trachea is positioned? So we have to keep the fingers in the sternal notch. We have to take the three fingers. The middle finger should be placed in the sternal notch and the other two fingers on either side of the sternocleidomastoid muscles. And we have to feel for whether the trachea is come in the midline. Usually the trachea will come in the midline. So the normal finding is trachea will be in the midline. In some uh, conditions, the trachea will be deviated to one side. So where we can see the tracheal deviation uh, towards is the trachea will be deviated towards the lungs in case of atelectasis, pleural fibrosis, pneumonectomy, lung agenesis or aplasia. And the trachea will be moved away in case of pneumothorax because in pneumothorax and pleural effusion, there will be more pressure will be inside the lungs. The tension will be more, which will push us the trachea away from the lungs. So in case of pneumothorax, pleural effusion and tumors, the trachea will be deviated away. And in case of atelectasis, pleural fibrosis, pneumonectomy, lung agenesis and aplasia, the trachea deviation will be towards the affected lung. So we need to check for the position of the trachea, whether it is the normal finding, if it is in the midline, whether it is deviated to one side or towards or away from the affected lungs. Then thoracic expansion, how the chest exertion or the chest wall is rising up and down. So anteriorly and posteriorly, we need to assess for the thoracic expansion. In thoracic expansion, we need to keep the hands in the posterior as well as the anterior part of the chest and ask the patient to take a deep breath and we have to see for how much inches the thumb move apart. The normal is the symmetrical expansion is there will be two to three inches apart will be there. In case of atelectasis or pneumonia or asymmetrical expansion, it will be less than two to three inches. So thoracic expansion will show whether the lung can expand in a good manner or in case of atelectasis or in case of any infection or if the patient is having COPD, there will be decreased lung expansion. So ask the patient to sit, we have to keep the hands in the posterior surface of the chest and ask the patient to take a deep breath and we have to see for how many inches the thumb move apart when the patient takes a deep breath. So the normal inches is two to three centimeter. If it is less than two to three centimeter, which indicates an abnormalities. So these are the common findings we need to identify in a palpation. So in the two methods, that is the inspection and the palpation, we need to identify certain things to identify any abnormalities in the respiratory system. So in this video, we have seen the inspection and palpation method of the respiratory system, how we can go about with the inspection, what we need to look into the inspection part and what we, can, what we need to look into the palpation part of the respiratory assessment. So to conclude this part, the ability to carry out and document a full respiratory assessment is an essential skill for all nurses. A prompt initial assessment allows immediate evaluation of severity of illness and appropriate treatment measures may warrant instigation at this point. So physical examination plays a vital role in identifying and verifying the symptoms experienced by the patient. So whatever the symptoms experienced or whatever the symptoms the patient experienced or explained in the subjective data or the history collection can be validated with the help of a physical examination. So physical examination, which stands as an objective data to confirm the diagnosis. So physical examination helps to find the objective data or signs to confirm the diagnosis. So these are the references. So the next video I'll be dealing with the next two aspect of the physical examination of respiratory assessment that is percussion and auscultation method of respiratory assessment. Thank you.